Hi there, thanks again for tuning in. This time in our session it's about the update statements in Clustered Index. As you may recall, in our last video we talked about updates in heaps and before that we talked about inserts in heaps and Clustered Indexes. So this is basically the follow-up video for this series of videos. The last time we talked about uh, updates as in in-place updates and not in-place updates. Again, for the clustered index, it's basically the same that we don't have to yeah, wrap our brain around non, uh, in place updates because in place updates are trivial since we just exchange the data in place, nothing happens. But for not in place updates, it gets interesting again. So, uh, for a clustered index, there are only two possible scenarios where we have a in, not in place update. The first scenario is that again our row does not fit anymore into our page then of course we have somehow to move the row so that it fits into a page again okay this is the first scenario it, it might be sound similar to the heap scenario but it is a little bit uh, uh, different since it's executed differently and the second scenario where we have not in place updates are when we change the clustered index or the non-clustered index key so as you may know uh, the clustered index uh, is a B3 and the B3 preserves an order towards the leave nodes towards the, the key column and if, of course if I change the key column I have to change the place where I may have to change the place where the row was. I will give you a short example. So this small example shall uh, show a little B3 let's say we have only three entries in our table that is Arthur, Robert and Z and those are the clustered index columns. So we have the, uh, the clustered key directly on the first name and let's assume we have another uh, other data here like age or address or whatever in those uh, data rows. So you have now uh, entries for Arthur, Robert and Z they are ordered accordingly in the B tree um, just like we, we know it. Of course if you now change Arthur's name to, uh, to Zach or something then of course Arthur has to move because we have the order on the, on the first name and, uh, and Zach would, be, would have to be uh, inserted here between Robert and Z. This uh, row has to move to another page of course. Um, but if we would change uh, Arthur to Aaron, then nothing would happen since we have only three entries and Aaron still is on the leftmost page, it could stay on the same page. So we may have a uh, change uh, in not in place update if we change the, uh, the column key, uh, the index key column. But the thing is, uh, it depends on the actual data. So, of course, potentially I have to move it, but maybe not. So we talked about uh, when we talked about heaps, we talked about uh, forwarded row records, and we talked about this thing that we have to never touch the non-clustered index. So this is not completely true for clustered indexes because you may remember that in non-clustered indexes for clustered indexes we have in the leave pages the clustered index key and not the row identifier because there is no row identifier for uh, clustered indexes. So the thing is if I change now in the clustered index the clustered key like this, I change Arthur to Zach for instance, I have also to change all of the non-clustered indexes for this table because they have this uh, key Arthur in their leaf nodes and the leaf node then has to move as well. Because of that behavior when we change uh, the, the clustered index columns, all the non-clustered indexes have to change, we want to have the clustered index key columns as narrow as possible, we want to have them as non-volatile as possible, so ideally they don't change at all, they cannot change and also we want to have it as sequential as possible because we want to have we want the B tree to grow to the right and not to grow in between to avoid page splits. If you don't know anything about page splits watch my other video about clustered indexes uh, and inserts into it um, but for this session that's what we uh, want to have ideally for a clustered index key. So now let's talk a little bit about how are non-in-place updates actually performed in a clustered index okay. So as we know a re short recap, we only have non in place updates if we change the index key or if we change var variable uh, length uh, columns to an extent that the row does not fit into the page anymore. So SQL Server for those cases creates a list of delete and insert statements for non in place updates. So in this short example we have a table A and we have for the table A two columns, the ID column that is the clustered index key column and a value column. And as you can see here we have um, those entries and let's assume now we want to create an update statement like update A set ID equals ID plus 1. 
if we have this simple statement, then uh, SQL Server would now create a list of uh, insert and delete statements. Okay, so I wrote them down here in a, in, a, in a shortened way, not the full SQL statement. And I also omitted the five here since I don't want to write so much. But we have basically the list would be delete from A where ID is 1. Then insert A where ID is 2. This would update this row. Then delete A where ID is 2. And insert A where ID is 3. It would be updated this row. Okay, I know that's not the, I know that's not official T SQL and it's not a SQL code at all. But just um, for what we do, it is sufficient. And again, so forth, if we want to update 3, it would delete it and update something with the 4. Insert, uh, this is here, delete A where ID 3, insert where 4, and so on and so forth. So with the 4, it would delete, and then insert where ID five with ID 5. So, then there are two ways when we have this list. So we have this list always if we update the clustered index key, or if we have a non-in-place update for a non-key column that is just expanding and does not fit into the row, then we also write delete and insert statements. We always order them after the, uh, the index key, in this case the ID, and it is already ordered after the index key, the statements. And then we have two possible ways. If we update an index key column, which we do right now, we delete all statements that uh, negate each other. For instance, Inserting something with ID 2 and then delete it again makes no sense. We can change it because this would negate it, uh, each other. The same for inserting 3 and delete 3, inserting 4 and delete 4. Okay, and it, afterwards we see we, it is sufficient to only delete the ID 1 and to insert ID 5. And that is what SQL Server does for clustered index key updates or generally for key updates on an index. If, if ID would not be the clustered key column, but the value or something else, then we would take the list and execute it as it is. And that also answers the unsolved question, how does actually a SQL Server handles a clustered index update when just the row expands? Actually, it's not an update anymore, it's just a delete and an insert. And since we already covered inserts, we know that there is just a page split if it's inserted in a way in between, or there's no page split when it's inserted uh, and you have a free space on the page. So this basically is uh, yeah, transformed into an insert problem. So watch the video about inserts in cluster indexes. But if you have um, if you have the clustered index key update, you see you just uh, have maybe few rows to insert or delete actually. So this is basically already it uh, about clustered index updates, very simple. So thanks for watching this video, uh, tune in next Sunday for another video and see you soon, bye!